uh, an elimination plan. I don't think it's worth. What? What the Let, let's chair. me finish. Let's me finish. This is an assessment I'm making. No, no. But because it is, no, no, no. Chair, no, no. may I say something? Chair. May I say something, Chair? I've not said anything. <laughs> We've given you a time. You, we said but we on this you. matter. I watch it. Chair. On could, this could matter. Please, 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 the, please plead with the IG. It's a point of order. No, no, not to say those things. Please. <laughs> okay. Avoid, avoid saying Just things. leave it. Leave yeah. it. Just talk on general terms. It's interesting. I can, I can allow DCI to proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, for this once again, opportunity to respond to the honor of member sentiments after I give, you give me an opportunity to express what I established preliminary out of the content of the complaint written by a lawyer representing Honorable Marara. Now, uh, what I can say is truth is very stubborn. Today, as perhaps some of you may have felt DCI is perhaps want to see his officer so he's noting the truth, tomorrow I'll be again with you, God willing, and you the same person who will confront me if I say honestly from the bottom of my heart that as per now for the little preliminary investigations which are established, I don't know this. This is what I'll stand with before myself and before God. And remember, sir, when we go to court, we are the police officers. We are the people who raise up our Bibles and Koran and other respective uh, religious uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 I mean uh, materials to take an affirmation that what we are going to say is the truth and nothing but the truth until you finish the proceedings of the matter that is before court. Now, that's why I'm actually committing myself. Sir, other than the content which we were given and which uh, through his kindness actually he really asked whether I received. You are very kind to that, at least because now I'm aware of what I'm going to respond. And you're even willing to give me a copy in the event I never received. Sir, I said I've received it. And here it is, and I went through the content. Other than the content, sir, which I've actually, I mean, tried to explain to this honorable committee, responding to each and every item, though I never even went to the description of the firearms of these officers, the way we have even withdrawn some firearms like pistols too, and then harmed again with the scorpions, some machine gun to the same officers. I did not even go to that, sir. Because even uh, I say I'm going to waste your time explaining some things which I said, sorry, the imagination. Because even you see even what they are describing, the scorpions of machine gun, that it is more considerable, it is the easiest to harm a police perhaps who is just moving around either on this uh, way to do, I mean, the, 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 the current allegation of assassination as opposed to a pistol, a seska, of which all of you I know, you all of you are armed people and you know so much about firearms and ammunition, which is a lie. Between a pistol shot, a seska, and even arming an officer, even a scorpion, we have harms movement, which actually can be scrutinized how our mean, harms do move from which officer to which officer and for which purpose. And when I said, sir, and I still stand with it, we don't have charge an officer in the DCI, neither in the special service unit. And that is the fact I stand up to now. And then what the new evidence, sir, which uh, Honorable Marara has shown me about the potong graphs, yes, I don't know whether he has shared with anybody else here other than myself, he has shown me three men. And another thing to be very correct, uh, maybe, maybe, yes, they could have been officers. I can't say they could not have been officers. Or maybe even they are, but myself as Kenoti, the DCI, may not even have seen them, neither the Inspector General. What we are trying to say is, you asked me, have you seen them? I said, no. But if they're existing, that even what I said from the instant, even if it's an ID parade, we are ready to do. Whichever way, sir, 
we are going to guide this investigation because they are very serious. Whichever way we are going to guide, let this matter be subjected to a absolutely independent investigation. And I really thank Honorable uh, Wetengura, sir. Thank you for having confidence in us that even if we are to investigate, perhaps we can bring findings here. Findings to bring to church a committee, we know, when, wherever we are, we know. It's not something s small. We know the kind of people we are dealing with, brains and wisdom and experience. And I bring a fiction or, I mean, an imagined investigation to this committee, surely. Do you think I'll be ready even to leave this door? It is something which we shall be able to account for, one by one, even not line by line. So, as we shall be guided and we stand guided, sir, if whichever way these investigations are going to be carried, the way we shall be guided, we are ready to submit ourselves 100%. And the priest monitor the way we are going to accord any assistance to this investigation, since now we are the people now who have been accused, and then subject ourselves to the investigation. We are ready for that, sir. Chair, Chair just one, one thing. Uh, eh? uh, Chair, just, just there is one thing that uh, Mr. Kinoti is not pointing out. Members have asked pertinent questions, and more specifically, on the arrests of the three senators. Did you know? Or did you give instructions to your officers to come and arrest me? And what was the offense? No. Yes. And did I send you a pin to come and arrest me? Did I collude with your officers to come and arrest me? Because this matter has been the public domain. We've seen senior officers or senior uh, citizens of this country, politicians, claiming that we colluded with your office to come and arrest me. So I want this matter to be clear and to be on record. Uh, IG and uh, DCI. Uh, you know, this house takes these two committees seriously. If you look at the composition, the chair here is a long-serving provincial administrator within your command chain. To my right, at the back, is our long-serving former Attorney General of this Republic, longest serving. My colleague, Senator Wetangula, is a long-serving cabinet minister. If I give you the CV, these are serious Kenyans, and it's for good measure. What you are being told by Senator Malala is that Article 244 of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya states that the National Police Service shall, one, strive for the highest standards of professionalism amongst its, its officers. Number two, it shall comply with constitutional standards of human rights and fundamental freedoms. And finally, that it will observe the highest standards of competence, integrity, and to respect human rights and fundamental freedoms and the dignity of Kenyans. Senator Malala is alleged to have committed an offense of failing to comply with COVID-19 protocols, which were actually approved by this House. Now, the question, when uh, IG, uh, DCI, that members are asking, was it commensurate with the offense, one, to send 20 officers at 3 a.m. to arrest Senator Malala despite the threats of COVID-19 you bundle him into a Zubaru vehicle drive him all the way to Mumias keep him in the cold he's a human being not, he's not even a senator, he's a human being we forget about his title and the status and I'm also speaking as a human being. And you are also a human being. Everybody here, we are human beings. You keep him in the cold 
till morning. And to make matters worse, he's taken to court and he's told there is no offense. No court even appearance. Now, we, we are having a conversation here. And what we want you to tell this committee, because there is nothing personal against you, there is nothing personal against IG. If anything, we, we have tremendous respect for all of you, you too. And uh, we have shared this, I even told you. Now, what we want to understand, who is this officer in the chain of command who extended that mistreatment to Senator Malala. And we want that to go on record before this committee so that we table a report before the Senate. I think that's what the members want to hear from uh, the two of you. And it's not too much to ask. I move, Chair. Yeah. I, I think because of the respect and seniority, I'd seen Senator Amos Wako. Uh, I think you had something you wanted to add. Uh, then please, we allow them to respond. Yes. Mr. Chairman, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I want to rest in the assurance of the DCI that this matter will be thoroughly investigated and if necessary by an independent uh, investigator like IPOA. I want to rest in that assurance, uh, the Chairman, but I wanted to raise issues of policy. Number one, I would like to know, as have, my chair has said, whether there was any order and at what level within the police force to arrest Malala to, uh, and to arrest other senators who are involved in this was there any such order? And at what level? And did it emanate from one source? Or did it emanate from different sources? Because the way I understand it is that uh, the Bomet senator was required to be Bomet, uh, the senator of Samburu was required to be there. The Senator of Kakamega had done a few things in Kakamega. So I want to know whether it was from one source and at what level. And if it was at different sources, in other words, your officers in the various counties where these people are required uh, were acting sort of independently. I want to know how it became a coin a coincidence that senators required in three counties by officers in those counties for what they had done in those counties were required on the same night to go to those counties. I just want to know. Now, if, if there was some coordination, I want to know whether that coordination was a coincidence again or was it not? I'm raising it as a policy issue because I do remember uh, at one time uh, we were involved with something like this, but we allowed the officers of the counties to, to, to do their own thing and in their own timing without any sort of promptings from the central authority. And if there was that prompting from the central authority, what was the motivation? I would like you to investigate that. But more seriously, you have the powers of arrest. 
are you and I would like to believe IG that in fact I know that you are a reformer has this incident prompted you and the DCI and other senior officers to see if you can review your policies as regards arrests because from what we have seen the methods of arrest were disproportionate to the offenses cost. I'm quite sure, and I know all the three senators involved, if they'd just been told by your officers in the counties, please come, we want you, they would have gone without any problem at all. There would have been no need to cause the arrests that were done simultaneously on the same day. Uh, so I need to know. Now, if it was a coincidence, then I would need to know if you have a policy in which such serious coincidence can take place without the central authority knowing. Because if the central authority knows it, then uh, because of the repercussions you can have on the law and order in the country as a whole, then the central authority would have said, do not do it on the same day. So does it mean that these different orders, by coincidence, it happened, and there was no policy in which the central authority can identify that such is going to happen so that the central authority can put a stoppage to it? I hope I've made myself clear on that one. The other one is that I think it's not just for members of parliament, but for everybody. Review how you arrest. It must be commensurate with your offense, as my learned senior has stated. And it must also be, you must take into account the, what you are arresting. Not just for senators, I'm not, um, I don't want uh, a particular claim for honorable members of parliament. But the fact that they are honorable, uh, it means unless they have misbehaved dishonorably by shooting and so on, blah, 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 then, of course, you can use the force that you used to arrest them. But honorable officers, law-abiding citizens of this country who have not done and other law-abiding citizens of this country who have not done anything very offensive and so on, surely there's no need to use the strong force to arrest such persons and at night and so on. But obviously if somebody is a well-known robber, a well-known shooter and so on, yeah, that's possible. But just for a law-abiding citizen, I would like to believe that the honorable members of parliament unless otherwise proved, are law-abiding citizens, there's no need to have carried out that. And the fact that it happened may very well mean there's no policy. And I would like the IEG particularly and the DCI to put into account such a policy. And you may find it in your archives around 1996. Uh, I attempted to put such a policy in effect. But obviously these arrests don't take into account the policy I had put down into, as an advisory to the police. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, let, let them answer and then I, I will allow, I will allow, I will allow you, Fatima, please, and I will allow you, just hold on, because there are too many uh, they might forget some of the things that we are asking. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. I, we, d we had this discussion beginning of this month about uh, the question being uh, posed here, and we, I took time to explain the chain of command and the operations oh. of the police. I don't know if, Chair, you like me to, to 
go back to, to the same. But uh, what exactly I, I, gave, I gave my explanation was the highlight of the chain of command within the National Police Service. It is the command starts from the immediate supervisors. And police don't require a single command to give orders for them to, to make an arrest. And some of the powers and guidelines and, uh, and uh, the Gazette notices are circulated up to the bottom. And in this particular case, COVID-19, uh, all the officers are aware of what to do and what they are supposed to, to, to make arrest. I'm very sure that uh, Honorable Senator Malala had a very clear conversation with the officers on the ground. It didn't need to come from the central authority, including the regional police commander, whom they kept in touch and they were communicating. And uh, the, the county and the sub-county commanders. Just to, even before the meetings they had on the ground, it is actually advisable for senior officers and not even for the first time. Honorable Senator Malala knows even before these incidents, he had to have a demonstration at Kakamega. And the regional police commander had uh, a discussion with, with him. And they agreed they stop the demo. And that was the end of it. These commands are structures in a way that you don't require in every given time an order from central command for effect of arrest. Not necessarily the police that they have to make an arrest. If they can uh, be able to agree and uh, the offense which is likely to take place, it is stopped at that level of discussion. That has happened quite a number of times between police and the members of parliament. And Senator Malala can attest to me uh, on that matter. We have had a very good experience, not, ne not necessarily with me. I'm just briefed. And actually, when it comes to me, I just say, just in, in involve the, the, the member or the particular person and try to bring this sense that uh, if this continues, it may require the police to take action. We are not happy to arrest. We know the inconvenience it caused. And in any case, COVID is not that serious offense. Even this case we are talking about, there was a lot of discussion with the Honorable Malala. And it did not need to come from me. And I think Honorable Malala, you can, test, you can, you can inform the House. A lot of discussion you, you undertook with the officers. And it was not in bad faith. For the coincidence, uh, uh, Honorable Senator Wako is talking about, it's also very interesting, I'll also uh, say, from, a, from an outside point. But there's no central command which gave that instruction. And I repeated this during our first discussions. And that's why I've kept saying that we need to develop a trust between the, the National Police Service and the honorable members. So that you don't look always at us as if we have fishy deals. We are bushing you. In fact, even since that meeting we had here, I had a discussion with all my commanders, the DIGs. The DIG administration, Mr. Mbugwa, DIG, Mr. Mbugwa, Mr. Gabo, and we were with DCI. Now let us talk to officers up to the ground. And I remember Mbugwa at a meeting of all the regional commanders, and we communicated the same. We don't just leave things to happen. Where there are wrongs, we make sure that we engage our officers and even myself, when I'm talking to the regional commanders, I give them responsibility that you are in charge of that region. So there's a lot of engagement, engagement which involves the information we are getting from our client, 
Uh, Honorable Chair, when we are out there, we don't look at you as a members of the Senate, but we look at you also as a, our client, and we are your servers, servants, because we provide security to you. And whatever you raise, either at this level or outside there as individual, or when you come to my office, and uh, Honorable Chair from uh, Legal Committee, you even raised a question during that discussion about your police station down in Yamira, which doesn't have officers. And I acted immediately because I don't have to wait until I accumulate a number of concerns from you, then I give out. I give immediately because I have so many things coming to my desk. That's assurance I want to give this honorable house. We are there to serve you. You are there to see the wrongs out there. And corrections is done uh, honestly after these discussions. Even for me, those concerns you raise, we incorporate in our directives. I want us to de develop that trust, and I've repeated more, because I don't want to leave here that uh, Honorable Malala thinks that I'm still chasing him. In fact, I would like Honorable Ma uh, Senator Malala to talk to me direct, and we come and we have conversations. Because it's not only you that you have raised those issues. Chair, I've I think we just want a straight answer. Why was I arrested and who gave the orders? Please. That, that is exactly what we are requiring from the IG. We just want to know why was I arrested. Because I was taken to Mumias police station. Uh, uh, eight hours drive from here to Mumias. And I, was, I have never been told anything about that arrest. So is it possible just... Uh, uh, for the IG to tell us why was I arrested and, 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 and most specifically the, the DCI because the officers who came to my house identified themselves as DCI officers and they even said that they had been sent by Mr. Kinoti there are videos to that effect so is it possible for Mr. Kinoti to tell this honorable house or these honorable committees that he is the one who gave instructions to arrest me and why did they arrest me that is all you are. I think we have made your point. Uh, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I'm not biased, really. I, I, I will allow you, but you see, we had an agreement that uh, we will stop a lot of questions until they, they answer, and then we give the other two colleagues uh, go go ahead go ahead go ahead and then for the other for, mm. i want to and stand then, because and then wako the way the way it is going i'm going to, to i'm going the way it is going i'm going to order for the speaker to give us accommodation here Chair, thank you so much. I think uh, we are really going round round in circles. We are not handling this matter with the seriousness it deserves. Why I'm saying this? We had a meeting with the security team last, last time when these senators were arrested. We actually told them that uh, what they did, it didn't meet threshold as far as arrest of those three senators were concerned and i think this matter is really very serious it's not an easy matter because what happened those two days were not just the discussions that we are having here it's matters that are affecting our families especially those those who are arrested and we told you guys the arrest didn't meet threshold Despite all that, we went and reported what you gave us as a committee of security. And clearly, we didn't even listen to the three senators. When we brought the, the report and chair was not there, on the floor of the house, we were rubbished that we brought a hogwash report to the house. And we didn't give opportunity to the three senators. Now that we have handled the matter of Senator Malala as a matter of urgency and his security and the security of his family is concerned, 
I would request, Chair, we give opportunity to the other two senators who can give their evidence. Then from there, I would actually request the security IG, DCI, uh, the deputy DIG, go back and give us a concrete and thorough report as far as this uh, house is concerned. I thank you. Thank you, Chair. My question goes to IG. Um, but IG, and I just want to know when you received the letter from Senator Malala, and um, if what took you so long for you to deliberate on the issue that he raised, and you termed when you started talking, you termed the whole allegation as fiction. What made you say that the allegation was fiction, and you did not even deliberate on the statement he was? You, that you received. Thank you. Marco, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want us to...